Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we are on the home stretch. We are about to invade Scrap Brain Zone and stop Dr. Robotnik once and for all. So we've got all the Chaos Emeralds, and now we are going to infiltrate the base of Dr. Robotnik. So, right off the bat, the first act of Scrap Brain Zone is on the outer layers of, of the base, while the second act is in the inside of the base. Or well, the third act, well, we'll get to that when we get there. So within that, the music is pretty good. The music is done pretty well on this zone as well, so that's pretty good. Oh, oh, that, oh that, that was close. I should stop tempting fate. Anyway, Scrap Brain Zone is of course a um, the final the final base zone for Dr. Robotnik where he is planning his world domination plans. And this is also a factory base zone where everything is all gloomy and all that stuff. And of course fire always goes from those chimneys as well, which is occasionally done. So you can actually see it if you actually are high enough. You can actually see the fire coming out of the, one of the chimneys, which is absolutely good. Considering the blast processing of the, Super, the Sega Mega Drive is pretty impressive. You can also see some of the lights blinking in the um, in the background as well, which is pretty nice as well. Pretty nice touch. I liked how uh, Sega did did a good touch on the graphics as well. Graphical presentation of the uh, Sega Mega Drive. So yeah. Anyway, these pigs can be annoying. They bring out bombs, which is pretty much problematic in an area like this. There are two pigs up there, but you have to defeat them both. So yeah, there you go. And we finish it off, and look at flames. Also, if you look on sort enough that you could actually see flames coming out the top of the chimneys. Nice graphical touch, by the way. And nice animation, by the way. And we've finished off Scrap Brain Act 1 now. We're on to Scrap Brain Act 2, the inner area of the of the base now. So, Scrap Brain 1 was a little bit more straightforward. The second one is a bit more trap-based. You have to be careful and to approach with a caution of these traps. So, like in, like, in the, like in certain areas of the game, you have two areas which you have to go to in order to reach, the, reach Dr. Robotnik. This way, this, the, the upper area where you can actually have a few more traps, and this way where more buzzsaws await you. But, of course, when you take the other route, you also have a crushing... Um, there's a platform which can crush you, so be careful with that. But when you take this one, you have these two trap doors which can... Uh, which leads to Telsas. So if you don't, so if you're not careful enough, you're gonna get zapped. And some of these fire, some of these fire pipes can be pretty annoying. This is what Dr. Robotnik's planned for us all along. <sighs> Robotnik, you're such a douche. Dr. Robotnik is such an evil bastard at times, especially when it comes to some of his um, traps, tricks and traps. Anyway, the only one to get out there, get to that uh, spring, and so you can actually get out of that pop and that was my fault. Ugh, and I didn't even expect that at all. And the bombs from s the bombs from Starlight Zone are also back as well. What the hell? Anyway, more of those bloody pigs that bring out bombs. Yep, out of their pouches, you have to uh, avoid those bombs. If you hit them, you'll definitely get hit. Oh, for God's sake! So those bombs can bounce. The only way they can burst is pretty much somewhere in the uh, lower regions of it. So, really, this zone is a bit more harder as well. But we finished it and we got through without actually suffering a single death. I did get hit quite a lot though, but... Mm, at least I, at least I got myself alive, and that's the main thing. So there we go. We got Doctor Robot behind this barrier, and look what he's gonna do. He's gonna truck. He actually broke the bridge, so we can not reach him. Group leading us to Scrap Brain Zone Act Three or Labyrinth Zone Act Four. <sighs> what an asshole. Anyway, this one has two parting pathways again. We've got the shortcut, which I'm taking, and the and the other way, which is the longer way. We have to rely more on air bubbles as well. This is really annoying. 
considering that I don't like a Labyrinth Zone and some of the, and some of the annoying cheap traps that are in there, how can the Dr. Robotnik actually know that this was coming towards me? Anyway, aside from that, there are a few color palette changes, most notably believed to the water, the zone, and the background. But at least I got through that zone, and now we're confronting Dr. Robotnik for the last and final time in Final Zone. So yes, so the basic, so basically what this is, is that Dr. Robotnik has two pillars. Two pillars can rise up at one time. One of them ha is empty, whilst the other has Dr. Robotnik. And whenever they go down, these spark balls can go down to where you are standing, or into where you're standing. So my strategy is go to the left, stay to the far right of the stage before Dr. Robotnik comes up. Uh, then go to the left when the spark balls are charging and go there to avoid getting, so I guarantee to not get crushed. Sometimes Dr. Robotnik can't be reachable because of certain areas, but then again, but then again, sometimes it can be a little bit cheap. It can be a little bit annoying. Spark balls can be a prick, can The spark balls aren't that much of a big deal. It's the platforms that can be problematic. Ugh, that was my fault. Sorry about that. Anyway, the reason why it's so hard is because you don't have any rings and hitting any of the spark balls is, is of course, instant death. Result, well, results in instant death, mostly. Anyway, let's get this over with, shall we? Dr. Robotnik, after what you will be put through, you are going to hell. You're going down, Robotnik. Yes, and that can happen occasionally. Unfortunately, the... The, the, what's that, the platform, they always go up and down and up and down. The pillars, what pillars actually go up and down can be predictable at times. Sometimes you can't even predict which platforms go up and which platforms go down, especially when it's Dr. Robotnik. Then again, it's his, then again, it's his nefarious plans that kind of do the trick. Pretty ingenious. But with the spark balls as well, spark balls aren't that really much of a big deal with the platforms that can be problematic. Especially if you're left with the empty one, Dr. Robotnik isn't in it. Dr. Robotnik is at the other side, which you can't hit. Unless you get enough momentum on the lower left one, which you can have to put, go into a spin dash or go do a running start and then spinning into it. That's, that's what happens if two of the platforms in the center you have to hit the left one, which is the lower left one, which you can do a running start and, of course, get him and by spinning attacking. Yeah. How many hits have we got? <sighs> Missed him! I occasionally get him doing that, but it doesn't, it doesn't really work that well. <sighs> yes, and we finally finished him. Dr. Robotnik, after all you've been through, through this is what I say to you. Yep, fuck you! You toe-faced toe egg-bellied slime ball. <sighs> anyway, we have finished Sonic the Hedgehog for the Sega Mega Drive. For the good ending, Sonic has all the Chaos Emeralds. He floats them up in the air and they disappear with a bright light and all the flowers start sprouting. Sonic goes to the screen with a big smile and of course we go to the credits. Alrighty, so what did I think of Sonic the Hedgehog as a whole? Well, this game is an absolute classic. This made the Sega Mega Drive a competitive against the Super Nintendo, and it's a 60-bit masterpiece. It's a game that really had a good start for the Sonic the Hedgehog series, and it really absolutely did well. Level designs are really done, although there the can be occasional level design flaws, but of course we still got some good. And of course there are a lot of great ones that overshadow the bad ones. Oh, the graphics are absolutely amazing. Even though it's 1990, even though it's about its age quite a lot, it's still pretty good to look at. It's nothing too desolate or anything like that. The animation is just top notch in this game. It just really feels completely impressive and Sega Magic esque. I absolutely loved how they did this kind of this game in both design, graphical presentation, and of course the animation as well as well as the backgrounds, they look pretty good. 
For the gameplay, it's absolutely simple stuff of side-scrolling platforming. It just absolutely works, although the, new, although the later Sonic 2D games would add a few new stuff in order to keep the gameplay fresh. For the music though, it's absolutely enjoyable. Masato Nakamura did an absolutely amazing job with the soundtrack, and he would later do the Sonic the Hedgehog 2 soundtrack, which is absolutely amazing as well. For the sound effects, they're actually pretty well done, especially with the Genesis sound chip being done with a Yamaha, with a Yamaha sound chip as well. And with the music being good, it was fantastic as well. Although the game only takes about an hour or two to actually finish, in terms of actually getting all the kills, that also counts to also getting the Chaos Emeralds as well. It's still a great game to play, and I recommend people to try it if you're starting out with the Sonic series. And we end up with Dr. Robotic bouncing up and down, madly saying, I HATE THAT HEDGEHOG! Great stuff. Awesome stuff. Now it's because I also got all the Chaos Emeralds and everything, that will make Robotic very mad because I thought it is plans for the world domination. Well, Sonic mostly. Anyway, this is me, Mitch McKids, signing out saying goodnight. Thank you for joining me. This is the end of the Sonic the Hedgehog Let's Play. Play it safely, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll see you guys in my I'll see you all in my next Let's Play coming soon to YouTube. See you later.